Today we're going to be looking at chapter 10, and this is specifically 10.1, right angle trig. And you did almost all of this last year in geometry, so it's mostly review. Um, so we'll just get into it. We're going to work with trig ratios, you know, sine, cosine, tan, Sokotoa, um, finding, working with some angles of elevation, and all the reciprocal trig functions, those are new. Why did the 30-60-90 triangle marry the 45-45-90 triangle? Well, let's see. What do we have behind there? They were right for each other. Do you remember the 30-60-90 and the 45-45-90? Well, you need to know those. So let's, right now is a good time to look at those, actually. So the 45-45-90, that's isosceles. Because if both of these base angles are 45, then the sides opposite them are congruent. And we'll use the ratio 1, we'll call those legs 1 to 1. And if you use the Pythagorean theorem, you'll uh, find that the hypotenuse is root 2. So the sides are in the ratio 1 to 1 to root 2. And then the 30, 60, 90, I'm going to draw it so that... This angle is 30 degrees is obviously smaller than this other one that's 60, and there's a right angle. And the sides are 1, 2, and root 3. Or maybe I should maybe list them 1, root 3, and 2. And, of course, remember in geometry that the smallest side goes opposite the smallest angle. So 1 is the smallest side. It's going to go opposite 30. And then the largest side will go uh, is the hypotenuse. And 2 is bigger than root 3, so 2 goes on the hypotenuse, and then root 3 is what I call the middle side, because it's in between those two. So that's how you can know how to label those. You do need to memorize those. We will be using them. We'll be using them today as well. So please pause and write those down. Three trig ratios. That's sine, cosine, and tangent. And we do sine of theta. Theta is the angle that we're working with. So let's draw a, a right triangle. By the way, these trig ratios are only for right triangles. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw a triangle and call this theta. It's a Greek letter. We often use it for angles. And I'm just going to look at my notes to see what, what I had planned to do here. Well, I don't even remember. Like I said, I made these slides last year. So let's say that this is, um, we'll just make up, let's just make up, let's do a triangle. Let's do the 3, 4, 5 triangle. How about? So the sine of theta, it's a, ra it's a ratio, and it's the opposite over the hypotenuse. And you did this last year. I'll write them all down first. And then cosine of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tan of theta is toa, opposite over adjacent. So last year we used soka toa, so ka toa, to help us remember these. Sine, so this stands for sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, tangent is opposite over adjacent. So that's how you can remember the trig ratios. And then if we want to do an example, something like this, you would locate theta, because I'm doing sine. By the way, it's always sine of an angle. There, if you just wrote sine equals something, like, well, in this case, sine of theta is going to be the opposite, which is 4, over the hypotenuse, which is 5. If you write sine equals four fifths, that's incorrectly written. Don't write it that way. You need to have an angle in there. It's called the argument, and it's necessary. So sine of theta is four over five. Cosine of theta is the adjacent three over five. Remember, adjacent side is next to, opposite is obviously across the other side there. Hypotenuse is the longest side. Tan of theta is the opposite, so come back to theta again. Go opposite is 4. Adjacent is the one next to it, but not the hypotenuse, so that's 3. So there are the three trig ratios for that particular triangle. Not sure why that's blank. 
Oh, special triangles we already did. Um, and we'll just go ahead and go on. You know what? I'm going to do with those special triangles actually again. I'm going to show you another thing here. So let's draw those again. 45, 45, 1, 1, root 2. And then it doesn't matter how you draw them as long as this, it's helpful if the small angle you label it. 30. So the opposite side of 30 is the 1. The hypotenuse is the longest side, that's 2. And the other side is root 3. So if you know the short side on the 45, 45, 90, then you would multiply it by root 2 to get the hypotenuse. So I'm going to say times root 2. Light other, the other way is if you know the hypotenuse and you need to go backwards and get the leg, you would divide by root 2. On this one, it's easiest if you also say you know the short side and you want to find the hypotenuse, you would multiply by 2. If you knew the short side and you wanted to find the middle side, you would multiply times root 3. And then if, um, if you knew the hypotenuse and wanted to go backwards, you would divide by root, or divide by 2. And if you knew the sh middle side and wanted to find the short side, you would divide by root 3. We don't normally go between the 2 and the root 3. We just we find the 1 and we go back and forth between these two. So now keeping that in mind, and I recommend pausing and writing those down. They're helpful. Let's do this example. Now the book does it differently. I find it easiest to just do it directly using special triangles. So I'm going to do it that way but then I'll also show you, show you the way the book does it. So using special triangles, here's my short side. So I know, I mean my short angle. So I know the side opposite it is the ratio of one. And then I know that the hypotenuse, this is the hypotenuse opposite the right angle. It has two, it's two times bigger than x. Oh my gosh, I could stop right there. If the uh, hypotenuse is two times bigger than x, then all I have to do to go this way is I just have to divide by two. So 74 divided by two is, let's see, half of 70 is 35 and half of four is two, so that would be 37. So I could find x very quickly using the special triangles. The book, on the other hand, uses um, trig ratios. So they locate the 30, and they notice that the side we're looking for is opposite, and the side here that we know is the hypotenuse. So opposite and hypotenuse, that's sine. So then they write, we, or we would write sine of the angle, 30, equals the opposite, which is x, over the hypotenuse, which is 74. Then what they do, or this is one way of doing it, is you would go to your special triangle that you have memorized, 30, 60. This is totally without a calculator. Opposite 30 is 1. We know the hypotenuse is 2. We know the side is root 3. Then you find on here that sine of 30 is opposite over hypotenuse, so that's 1 over 2. So you replace sine of 30 with what it is equal to, which is 1 half, and then that equals x over 74. And then you solve the proportion, or I'm just going to multiply both sides by 74 because that'll do the job quite nicely. And then 74 divided by 2 is indeed, uh, what did we say it was? 37. It's a longer way of doing it. It works just as well. So it's personal preference. I like the faster way myself. I guess use whichever one comes to mind, right? As long as you can get it to work, get the right answer without using a calculator. These are totally non-calculator. Okay, so let's do this one. I'm going to do it my way because I think it's so much faster. I notice this is a 45, 45, 90. So I know that if I know the hypotenuse and I want to go backwards and find one of the um, legs, I need to divide by root 2. So I'm going to take my hypotenuse. I'm going to divide it by root 2. We did this last year in geometry as well. Uh, we need to rationalize. We already know about that. We've worked with that this year a fair amount. So we have 20 root 2. Root 2 times root 2 is just 2. We know that we can simplify the 20 over t uh, 2, which is 10, but the root 2 is still tagging along there. So we get 10 root 2 for x. 
which is nice and fast. Now I do realize I'm not doing it the way they're doing. They're using that trig function. And I am totally okay with that because you know what? In the upper level classes, we would just do it the way I just did it. So that was, I'm not even sure what example that was. Oh, that was example two. Great. So example three, we're moving right along, which is always good. In a water skiing, oh, you know what we need to talk about before this? Blank page, so maybe before this example, I'll just do it down here. There is the angle of elevation and the angle of depression. We need to talk about the difference between those because they're very, they're very different. Angle of elevation and angle of depression happen when you have an observer li either looking up at something or an observer looking down at something. So like someone standing on the top of a bridge or a cliff or, or someone standing low looking up at something tall. So for instance, say you have a, a object, I'm going to uh, just make it a point. And say I'm looking up at the top of this, I'll just do a tree because I like trees. So there's a tree, there's a little person here. I'm going to disregard their height, although in our problems that we're doing, a lot of times we do keep the height, we consider that, but let's pretend the person's really small. This angle right here, it's uh, the angle that the hor horizontal and the line of sight, so this is the line of sight, and this is the horizontal. That angle is the angle of elevation. <coughs> So it's from the horizontal up to the line of sight. Conversely, if you were a bird sitting on top of the tree, this little bird here, looking down at the person, there would be an angle of depression. You have to be very careful with the angles of depression. That the angle of depression is not this angle here. It's actually the angle that formed by the line of sight and the horizontal. This is the angle of depression. It's a very common mistake to think that this angle right here is the angle of depression. It is not. Now, based on your geometry skills, the horizontal is always horizontal, right? So these two lines are parallel to each other. And this is a transversal. And remember that these angles here are alternate interior angles. And that parallel lines imply alternate interior angles congruent, which we learned last year. So the angle of elevation is equal to the angle of depression. Angle of elevation um, is equal to the angle of depression. I highly recommend drawing, sketching what I just wrote down so that you can remember the difference. Okay, now I'm going to er erase this so we have room to do this problem. So we'll get rid of that, everything. In a water skiing competition, a jump ramp has the measurement shown. And to the nearest foot, what is the height h above water that a skier leaves the ramp? Oh, that's not an angle of elevation problem. I guess I got ahead of myself. That's OK, though. This is just a basic, I'm going to draw a picture here. It's just a basic right angle trig problem. So this is our right angle. This is h. This is 15.1 degrees. This is 19 feet. Okay, what you do on this one is you will want to use trig. We have an angle. You look at this side, H is opposite, and this is the hypotenuse. So you think about SOHCAHTOA, and which one uses opposite and hypotenuse? That's going to be sine. So we're going to use sine, and when we write it, remember we write sine of the angle, which in this case is 15.1 degrees, equals the opposite side, which is h, over the hypotenuse, which is 19. And then we, um, we want to solve for h. Whatever is down here needs to get multiplied to both sides. That kills that. And we have h equals all of this. That's where we go to our calculator, which I have not used yet today, so I have to bring it up. Anyway, you're going to make sure your calculator is in degree mode. So you can go to the mode button. Mine, I'm pretty sure, defaults to radians. Oops, this is a pain. So every time I open this calculator, I'm going to need to go to mode. 
and I need to arrow down and put it into degrees. We will learn about radians this year, so that'll be fun. Okay, so I just need to do 19 sine of 15.1, because now I'm in degrees, and I get 4.95. And the units are in feet, because the hypotenuse was in feet. And make sure that that makes sense. That is reasonable, because it's a fairly small angle. And uh, that just makes sense. So that's a good answer. The jump ramp's about five feet high. I would say do this one on your own. And then I will quickly show the setup. So I can see to the new change, what is the length of L? So L, so this is again opposite over hypotenuse. So sine of 17 equals 12 over L. Oh, do listen, because this is important. Now, I have a variable in the denominator, uh, but yet I have to multiply both sides by whatever's down there. So that's L to both sides, that cancels. Now, I need to get rid of the, or get the L by itself, so I have to divide both sides by sine of 17. So this is a slightly different order than the previous problem that we did. And I wonder if I have that one so I don't have to take the time to do it. I do. So that ends up being 41 inches when you put it into your calculator. Oh, see, I already had this discussion, so we could skip that. And now we're on to example four. A biologist whose eye level is six feet above the ground. So we, we care about the, how high this eye is off the ground now. Just go with the standard stick level, stick figure on level ground. This is, person is six feet, their eye is. And then we've got an angle of elevation. That, oh, it's the top of a tree again. Okay, so here's the top of our tree. I'll save drawing the picture just to save time. The eye angle of elevation is... 38.7 degrees. So that's going to be the line of sight, the angle of the line of sight with the horizontal. So we have to draw in a horizontal here at the eye, and that's going to give us, or be, 38.7 degrees. And the biologist is standing 180 feet from the tree's base, so that's this length here. And we are asked to find the height of the tree to the nearest foot. What I'm going to do here is I'm not going to find the entire height right off. I'm just going to find the height of this triangle. Because I can, remember with sine, cosine, tan, you have to use the right triangle. So I can only find sides of my triangle. But this 180, 180 feet, that does translate up to the here. So we still know that length. All right, let's think about SOHCAHTOA and decide which trig function that we need to use. Okay, so I've got my angle. I'm trying to find the opposite side, and I also know the adjacent side. So that's tan. So again, we write tan of the angle, which is 38.7 degrees, equals the opposite side, which is h, over the adjacent side, which is 180. Then we multiply both sides by 180, and we cancel those, and we go to our calculator, which I will do for you here, and I've got 180 tan of 38.7 degrees equals 144. Now it says to the nearest foot, so I'm just going to round this to 144. But be careful, that's not the right that's not the final answer, right? Because that's just this part right here. We also have to add in the distance from the ground up to his eye. That's six feet, so we have the same unit. So we can simply add 144 plus six and get 150 for the total height. So I'm adding, just so you know, I'm doing 144 plus six for the six foot person, and that's 150 feet total. So it was a two step process there using trig. This one I'm going to skip just to save you time, but I will give you the answer. Hopefully I have it here. In my notes, so it'll take me a sec to find it. Okay. And this is being rounded to the nearest foot. That's weird. I have a couple answers here. I have 213.8. And again, I did these la notes last year, but then I have 220, and I'm not sure why I did that. Um... Let me check something real quick. 
So I'm not sure why I have two answers there. You should have handed 120 times 10 of 60.7. Oh, I bet you have to add. Plus. Oh, yeah, 6 again. Huh? Oh, I'm in the wrong mode. So I do everything in, and I'm on my own calculator right now. I do everything in radians, so that's why I got the wrong, wrong answer. If you get a weird answer, it's probably you're in the wrong mode. Oh, I get it. Yeah, so this is what you get, but then you have to add six feet to it because the guy's six feet off the ground, his eye is. And when you do that, you get about, you get 219.8, and so then that rounded up to 220 because they want it to the nearest foot. So this is the correct answer here. Moving on to the very last idea, which is new to you. It's the um, reciprocal trig ratios. So every trig ratio has a reciprocal. So sine of theta is, um, op you don't, don't write this down when I'm writing down here, I'm just mentioning this. Opposite over hypotenuse. Well, if you flip it and do the reciprocal, hypotenuse over opposite, that's called cosecant. And I'll show you what the abbreviation is. I'll write it out first. So cosecant, or the way we write it is, C whoa, I dropped my pen, shoot, is um, CSC. Cosecant of theta is the reciprocal of sine. So it's 1 over sine, which is the same as hypotenuse over opposite. Then there's something called secant, which is the reciprocal, uh, oh, first of all, I'm getting ahead of myself, SEC, so you say secant of theta, here's our abbreviation. That's the reciprocal of cosine. So therefore, instead of ca, it's ha, hypotenuse over adjacent. And you'll have to memorize these too. And then there's cotan, or cotangent, that's written out long, and then the abbreviation is cot, or cotan. That's the reciprocal, obviously, of tangent. And instead of toa, it's adjacent over opposite. So memorize these, and let's do an example. Example 5. Find the values of the six trig functions for theta. Alrighty. That's interesting. 70 and 24. Well, I know already I'm going to need a hypotenuse because I know that's part of some of these. So what are we going to do to get the hypotenuse here? Well, we're going to use Pythagorean theorem. So 24 squared plus 70 squared equals h squared. And when you put that in your calculator, it's faster if I just do it on my own, to be honest. And you guys can do it on your own easily enough. Second square root, second answer. 74. So I get h equals 74. Oh, I bet that's a Pythagorean triple, because we got whole numbers. But we didn't recognize that, at least I didn't. All right, now we're in business. So it does say all six, so let's do sine of theta, cosine theta, tan of theta. Now I do ask that when you do these, you do them in the same order because it's much easier to check these. Imagine me checking out a six for each person. That's a lot to see. So then right over here, we'll do sec or cosecant, which is the reciprocal of sine, then secant, reciprocal of cosine, and then cotan. So everything's all mapped and nicely ordered. And then it's just a matter of finding them. So sine of theta is going to be opposite over hypotenuse, 70 over 74. Oh, so annoying because you know what we have to do? We have to um, reduce these. It's annoying that they did that. They didn't reduce them ahead of time. All right, well, let's reduce it. So divide by 2, that's going to be uh, 35 over 37. You know what I'm going to do, to be honest, because I know these are going to have to get reduced anyway. I'm going to reduce them ahead of time. And then that way I don't have to reduce them every time I go to do it. So I'm going to divide each of these by 2 to get um, nice numbers to work with. So 24 divided by 2 is 12, and then 74 divided by 2 is 37. 
and those don't reduce any further. So it's a 12, 35, 37 triangle. Let's use those blue numbers instead. That'll save us. So now cosine of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. So the blue numbers, that's 12 over 37. I noticed, I do remember from last year in the book too, some of those example, the problems you have to do in the homework, they don't give you reduced answers. So it, it's okay with me. In fact, I recommend it. Once you find your three sides here, reduce them down because the ratios are uh, is what's important. That's not true on all problems, but on these types of problems, we're just looking at ratios, so you can reduce them and take a shortcut. Tan of theta is 35 over 12 because I'm using the blues. Opposite over adjacent. And then these, guess what? All you have to do is the reciprocal of this. So 37 over 35. Secant's the reciprocal of cosine. That would be 37 over 12. And then the reciprocal of tan would be 12 over 35. And that's all there is to it. This one, oh, see again, these are divisible by 2 at least. So um, I'll go ahead and give you the answers. And then th that way you do them on your own. But, um, and I'll just give you a hint. I would redu divide these by 2 and get 9 and 40. And then you can find this third side, which ends up being 41. Okay, so then sine would be 40 over 41. I'm using my blue numbers. Cosine, I'm just copying these down. Nice thing about using the blue numbers is they've already been reduced and you don't have to reduce them six times, you know, for each one of these. Reciprocals here. Now you will get some where you have to, uh, like you'll have radicals and you have to simplify the radicals. I'm not sure if that's going to show up in this homework or maybe a different homework. But uh, there you have it. The, that's the end of that lesson. So I'll see you next time.